So we're going to do another example involving friction. And in this case now we have a box that is on an incline. We have the dimensions of the incline. Um, we're not given explicitly an angle of the incline, but we do know that for every four meters in the horizontal, it will go up three meters. We have the dimensions of the box given. We have it that the box is two meters along this way and 1.5 meters along this way. And in the question statement, we also know that the box is one meter wide. So we can kind of imagine that the box, if you try and draw in 3D, goes out this way by one meter. So we can determine then from those dimensions and knowing the density of the box, what the weight of the box is. So we can also imagine two situations that we have with this problem. We have the situation that given the force P is going in an upwards direction, probably seems the most evident that the box could move upwards up the incline. But you can also imagine that if this force P isn't big enough, that the box could actually slide down the incline. So we have two situations that we need to consider, and then there will probably be a range of values for P at which the box would remain in equilibrium. And we're gonna evaluate both of those situations and find that range. So the first thing we need to do for this problem is we don't actually know the weight of the box at this moment in time. So the weight W is going to be going down here. So let's calculate the weight of the box. Weight of the box. And we have then that W is equal to, let's put all the dimensions in a bracket. We have 1.5 meters multiplied by 2.0 meters, multiplied by one meter out of plane. And we multiply, so this will give us meters times meters times meters, something in meter cubed. We can multiply this by the mass density, which is 1500 kilograms per meter cubed. So altogether, this will give us something in kilograms. So that's meter cubed kilograms per meter cubed so we end up with something in kilograms and to convert from kilograms to force from Newton's second law force is mass times acceleration we multiply by the acceleration due to gravity 9.81 and this gives us then that the total weight of the box is 44,145 newtons you could move into kilonewtons at this point, but we're gonna stop in newtons. So now we need to have a look and draw the free body diagrams for the two scenarios we've identified moving up the plane or moving down the plane. So I'm gonna start with moving down the incline. So scenario one is down the incline and we'll draw the free body diagram for this situation so we get our box and I'm going to draw my free body diagram in a coordinate system that's rotated so instead of in we look at the original thing that we might consider this to be the global coordinates x and y I'm going to define a coordinate system, x dash and y dash, which is in line with the plane. So we get to rotate the whole problem around and think of things in x dash and y dash. It's perfectly possible to solve the problem using the global coordinate system, but I personally prefer to use this rotated system. So in this rotated system now, the applied force is parallel to the x dash direction. However, our weight has rotated around. 
by an angle of theta. So we will have components down the plane and component going onto the incline. So that's W. Our normal force still acts normal to the plane between the box and the incline. So our normal is always normal, hence the name normal. Okay, and now for down the incline, we would expecting our box to shift in the right, towards the right. So therefore, our friction force opposes this motion and must therefore point to the left. So that is our friction force F. And finally, it helps us there to calculate our angle theta, or at least have the sines and cosines. We have three, four, five, or O, A, and H for Sokotoa. Okay, so now I'm going to take the sum of the forces in this Y dash direction and find equilibrium. Try to keep this free body diagram on the page. So some of the forces in the Y dash direction, I'm gonna have minus W pointing down, but it's only the component of W pointing in the downwards direction. So that is the cos of the angle theta. And then we have going in a positive direction, Y dash direction, we have the normal force N and it's the whole of the normal force N, and that must be equal to zero for equilibrium. I'm gonna rearrange this slightly in terms of N, so take the W cos theta to the right-hand side, so I will get N equals W, and cos theta now is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is or divided by five, don't even need to calculate what the value of theta is. And I get that my value for N equals 35,000, 35,316 Newtons. And this is a value I'm gonna need later, so I'm gonna double underline it. Now I'm looking the X dash direction and evaluate equilibrium. So some of the forces in the X dash direction. So again, I have a component of W. So that is W times the sine of theta. And it's going in the positive X dash direction. So it's positive. But I have minus the friction force F and minus the applied force P. I'm gonna call this, because of the scenario we're considering, I'm gonna call this P down. And for equilibrium, this is equal to zero. So we can rearrange the equation in terms of P down, and I get that P down is equal to W times the sine of theta, which is now three fifths, and minus naught, and for the slipping condition is 0 0.3, which is the coefficient of friction given in the problem, multiplied by the normal force N, which was here 35,316. So straight away, we can calculate that the force required at impending slip would be 15,892.2 newtons, or almost 16 kilonewtons. We're gonna move on now to the second scenario where the block begins to slide up the hill. Scenario 
to up the incline. Incline. And again, we draw the free body diagram for this system. And we're in this x dash y dash coordinate system and let's put our forces on there we have w which is acting at the angle theta of the incline we have our force p which is now parallel to the incline normal force n and crucial for this problem, if we're going up the incline, which is this direction, then our friction force needs to oppose that motion. So our friction force now points in the positive x dash direction. So different from scenario one. And this is kind of one of the key reasons why we draw the free body diagram so we understand the system that we're working with. Now, if we try to look at both of the free body diagrams at the same time, if we look in the y direction, we have W cos theta and the normal force N, nothing else. And in this, we have still W cos theta and N. So the sum of the forces in the y dash direction hasn't changed. So sum of the forces in the y dash direction is unchanged. And therefore, we don't really need to do the calculation we've already done. So we still know that N for this scenario, that N equals 35,316 Newtons. And now we're going to look at some of the forces in the X dash direction. And so, having a look at this diagram, we have W sine of theta plus F now, going in the positive X dash direction, but minus the applied force P, which I'm now going to call P up, to distinguish it from last time, is equal to zero. And I'm going to rearrange this equation in terms of P up. So P up equals W times the sine of theta, which was 3 fifths plus F. And we can substitute the values for W and we get that. And for F, for a sliding case for F equals Fs, which is equal to mu S times N. And we get that the force at impending motion to get this block to slide up, up the incline is 37,082 Newtons. That's N for Newtons, not N for normal force. So, having a look at the two values, it would take us 16,000 kilonewtons to go down the block, and 37,000 newtons to push the block up. So we can then write, collect this information together, and say that the block is in equilibrium if P lies in the range and I'm going to round these numbers up 16 kilonewtons or 37 kilonewtons